You guys ready? This is one of those messages I'm sure I'll get some criticism and I'll have to apologize for something or I'll apologize for nothing if I said it the best I could and it's just, you got to deal with it. Y'all ready? Tell somebody I'm ready. ready. To love, to, to love deeper and to love more like Jesus, sometimes you have to look at the places in your life that aren't very loving and it does not feel good to do that. But we are about, it doesn't feel good for anybody, but we're about to go deep and wide where it hurts. Y'all ready? Tell somebody I'm ready. Tell somebody I'm ready. Matter of fact, here we go. Tell the person next to you with authority online, if you're with me right now, you can, you can drop a comment. Here's my title today. Practice what you project. Tell the person next to you with authority. Say it. Say, I'm going to practice what I project. Practice what you project. Matter of fact, we're going to jump right in it. The definition of projection is this. It's in your bulletin. If you don't have a bulletin, uh, you can raise your hand and somebody will bring you one. Keep your hand up until you get it. We're growing together. We're taking notes. You can take notes online. Uh, the, in the post of this video, you can click the Catalyst Church app, download it, and there's notes there. We're growing in God's word. Y'all hear me? You guys ready? The, de- the, the definition of projection is this. Unconsciously, Taking unwanted emotions or traits you don't like about yourself and attributing them to someone else. And I'm adding they're attacking or accusing others of it as well. We project. We project on our friends, on our families. We project on people who believe differently than us, who disagree with us, who are just straight up different than us. We project. Matter of fact, we project tile vomit. On them verbal vomit and projection comes from a place of very very deep just comes from woundedness shame and insecurity every single time and projection runs deeper than you think runs deeper than you think matter of fact here's the thing you have to admit every one of you if you want to hear this message if you want to be open to it you have to admit this and you have to accept it because it's true we are all biased you hear me Matter of fact, tell the person next to you, say, you're biased. Say, I'm biased. We are all biased, which means we all have blind spots. That's awesome. And I also have water on the floor. We all have blind spots. The word prejudice simply means the root of the word is to prejudge. We, you are passionate, you are overly passionate and prejudiced in the places, the areas in your life that you are either guilty or biased. We all have blind spots, we all have wounds, and we are guilty of projecting in those places. For example, a person, a person who cheats on their spouse is typically or can be very possessive and controlling because they are projecting their own guilt on their partner. A person who has a person who has been cheated on can project on their uh, can project their bitterness towards their ex onto their current partner. Tell somebody practice what you project. The most anti-abortion people that I have ever met in my life typically are the ones who are very hostile towards people. And it is because they are projecting, they typically had abortions and they are projecting their shame towards towards themselves onto other people. And so the way they do what they do is hostile because they hate themselves. Projection, projection. We live in a world where we have gotten really good at explaining away projection. Because projection happens in the places in your life that one, you don't want to admit that you deal with, you don't think you deal with, or honestly, you don't think it's a problem. You may think it's a good attribute that you, the things you project. Don't believe me? Look what we've done with the word explain. Mansplain. Mansplain. Y'all have heard all the different ways. Mansplain. Oh, you just mansplain that. You just mansplain that. Men, we, I hope you have enough wisdom not to say the woman, no, the word women's, women's playing very much. Because you know, you know, you mess around and lose your life doing that because what you'll get is you just don't understand what it's like to hate the world once a month because of hormones. 
All my men, I know that you didn't amen that loud because in your mind you're like, thank you so much for saying it. Don't say amen loud because you got to go home with her. I don't. And I'm up for a war. And Angie knows that. So we're going to go home and sleep today. White splain. White splain. We talk about that when racism and white people are trying to explain. White splain. Hey, we got we got. I just made this one up, but it's a thing. Brain splain. Made it up this week, but it's a thing. You use your intellect to talk over people to explain away the things that you're projecting in your life. And it's all the areas of your life that you either don't want to admit that you deal with, don't want to feel, or you don't think it's a problem, but it is. We have gotten good at working circles and explaining away the things in our life that we are projecting and we are easily provoked. We are, we are projecting, we don't realize it, and God wants you to work on it. We're going to see it today. Tell somebody, practice what you project. Practice what you project. By the way, buckle up. I'm just getting started. I hurt my own feelings a lot this way. A lot less prep and a lot more bandaging up my own wounds. If I hadn't, if I hadn't read your mail yet, give it time. I'm going to. Just give me a second. Don't worry. Just wait. I want you to hear from Jesus, not being today. So we're going to go from the teachings of Jesus. Will you lift your hands with me, Lord? I just pray. I just pray that you would... um. Speak to us and help us love. Love more like you, not love more like we think you love, but Lord, love more like you. We want to be a part of the solution in the world, not a part of the problem. We want to help heal wounds, not help deepen wounds. And for us to heal wounds, uh, we have to heal ourselves. Lord, we know that hurting people hurt people and healed people heal people. And Lord, we've got to look in the mirror. We've got to begin to stop projecting and start working on our own selves and our own character. And we've got to begin to see the places that we're doing that, that we don't like to admit it and we don't like to acknowledge it. Lord, help us. Even if you have to put a scalpel in us today, Lord, do it. We want to hear from you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to hear from Jesus, not me. We're going to go to Matthew Matthew chapter 7, Sermon on the Mount, most popular sermon that Jesus preached. Matter of fact, probably the honestly, greatest sermon ever preached. Matthew chapter 7, here it is. Do not judge others and you will not be judged. For you will be treated as you treat others. Man, right now we could just wrap up and go home. And if we started practicing and buying into that, man, the world would be a better place and your world would be better. Your family would be better. Your job situation would be better. The standard you use, Jesus said, the standard you use in judging is the, is the standard by which you will be judged. Here it is. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? Think about it, a lot of, a lot of us don't see a log in our own. We're, not, we're, we're blinded to the log in our own eye, and that's why we're projecting, and we've got to admit it, we've got to see it. How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of the speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? You're biased, you're blinded, you're guilty, you're arrogant, you're prideful, trying to help everybody else instead of heal yourself. Jesus says, hypocrite. First get rid, hypocrite. First get rid of the log in your own eye and then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Here's what Jesus is saying. Double standards are destructive. They are destructive. Hypocrisy is not being messed up. We are all messed up. Hypocrisy is not being dysfunctional and having character defects. Everybody in this room and everybody online that will ever hear this message are dysfunctional and have character defects. The Bible says we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. The scripture also teaches that if a man thinks of himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Hypocrisy is not being messed up. Hypocrisy is pretending that you're not messed up. Well, I just, I don't do that, but no. Hypocrisy is pretending that you were better than you really are. And a lot of times it's not that we're even trying to talk other people into believing that we are less dysfunctional. It's we're trying to talk ourselves into it. So today, I want you to see that double standards are the, if I had to pick one of the most, if I had to pick the most toxic attribute in our culture right now, church culture, church culture, U, um, United, USA, US culture, it would be projection and double standards. Absolutely. 
So we're about to do this thing. Tell somebody, practice what you project. I don't want, I want to support this with more scripture than just this from Jesus because I don't want anybody to say he just cherry picked a passage. I want you to see that this was a way of life for Jesus. Jesus had a lot of haters. That's why he ended up on a cross. Religious people were his haters. There are circles that that's still the same, but a lot of people don't want to hear that right now and I want to open everybody's heart. Jesus had some haters. They were hating, they were projecting on him. They were prejudging him And in John chapter 8, Jesus says this in response to those people. He says, you judge me by human standards, but I do not judge anyone. And if I did, my judgment would be correct in every aspect because I'm not alone. The father who has sent me is with me. Jesus says, I got perspective from heaven. If I wanted to judge you guys, the Bible says that we are naked before him. King David wrote in Psalms, he says, you know me, oh God, you've searched me. Jesus says, I've got perspective from heaven. If I judged you, if I called you out, it would be spot on. I would hit you dead on. I would sum you up, hem you you up. I would hurt your feelings. But here's the thing. He says, I'm not here to judge. That's not what I'm doing. That's not my motives. That's not my heart. And it shouldn't be ours. He knows you better than you know yourself, but he still doesn't call those things out. Matthew chapter 12 of Jesus' practices. Y'all awake out there? Well, I know I, got, I know I got all my people over there in youth that are lively and will wake y'all up. Tell somebody, I'm ready. I'm ready. Matthew chapter 12, here is how Jesus did things. This is how he lived his life. Matthew 12, it says, He, Jesus, will not fight or shout or raise his voice in public. He will not crush the weakest reed or put out a flickering candle. Finally, he will cause justice to be victorious and his name will be the hope of of all the world. What that means when it says that Jesus will not break the weakest reed or put out a flickering candle, that means that if it has the hope of life, if somebody or something has the hope of life, if people are trying, if they're doing the best they can, he was not a hater. He did not kill, he he was not a hater. He was rooting for people to win. I see a lot of people in church circles that are rooting for people to lose because you don't like them. It says he didn't break the weakest reed. The weakest reed, it says he didn't break. He didn't put out a candle that was barely burning because Jesus wanted people. He said, I've come that you may have life. And when you're trying to put out everybody else's life and put it out their flame, that is not how Jesus practiced things. But that's how we do because we project because we go so inward that we start projecting and trying to put out everybody else's fire because ours went out a long time ago. Jesus told his disciples when they were baptizing, they they found this group of people baptizing and, and going out teaching and they were doing it differently than Jesus and his disciples. And they said, Jesus, what do we do? You know what Jesus said? He said, if they are not against us, they are for us. But we live our life on the defensive and we struggle and we struggle and we struggle. And the scripture says to think and live like Jesus. Paul said, let the same attitude, let the same mind that was in Christ be in us. And so we've got to quit projecting because we lash out at others and then we lecture others about loving others. We give a lot more criticism than we're willing to take. That is a double standard, and it will kill the life that God wants to give you. You will not have joy, and you will be miserable. So for the rest of this message, I want to apply the practices of Jesus, the way Jesus did things, because if we're supposed to do it the way he did it, we've got to do it the way he did it, and we've got to heal before we start hurting. Because we got to heal, because if we don't heal, we're going to hurt, and we're going to hurt others, because heal people, heal people. Tell somebody, I'm ready. I'm ready. It's time to practice what we project and quit projecting it. Can you open your heart today? Can you hear my heart? I want you to know, as always, my applications are always just as hard at me. Just as hard at me. I'm not going to be, I'm not being, I'm not, I don't want you to take it personal. I don't want you to think I'm, I'm making political statements because I'm not. I'm a pastor. I'm glad I'm not in politics. I love people and I think the heart is where healing happens. Legislation may be the end result, but the heart is where it happens. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Two things before we jump into it. Take your own criticism, live your lectures. 
You want to heal, heal from double standards and quit vomiting on everybody, things that you're really insecure about? And it runs deeper than you think. Take your own criticism, live your lectures, and you begin to heal. And when you begin to heal, you'll do less projection and more healing. And you'll actually answer the call that Jesus has put on your life. And you will have more clarity than you've ever had. You will actually live the peace that Jesus said, I give, not the world. So we're jumping into this thing, and I'm just going to jump right in. The Afghanistan crisis was and is tragic. Hadn't even mentioned it on this stage for however long it's been now. It's always been tragic, and it is tragic. But the thing that has broken my heart is seeing leaders, especially pastors, putting out there on social media, saying things constantly from the pulpit, saying things like, uh, this is just one of those things that, that you, you, it can't happen sudden. You have to turn, a, it's like turning a ship. It takes strategic and organizational leadership to do and make a move like that. That's absolutely true. But here's the thing. We, I, you, everybody online right now have no idea the strategic and organizational leadership it takes to be responsible for hundreds of millions of people. And when I see the animosity from people who punch a clock every day, who have a handful of employees or pastor small churches, and they've never had growing church or never been able to grow past a certain amount because they don't do organizational and structural leadership in their personal lives or pastoral lives, which is why they fly by the seat of their pants and their ceilings lowered. When I see that, that is projection. Instead of project on our leaders, how about let's pray for them? Because whoever is not in the day, whoever, when your person is in the White House don't project now we've seen Donald Trump and we've seen Joe Biden and the person you don't like you projected on start praying for both of them doesn't matter the party it is projection I'm not making a political statement it is projection when you were criticizing somebody over something you know nothing about nothing about we will never know the heaviness of the responsibility of being the president or being, being even a senator, you, will, you don't have a reference for people that have a heavier and more people. They're responsible for more people than you. So why in the world do you feel the need to tell everybody how bad they suck and how senile they are? Because you are projecting. Tell somebody, practice what you project. It runs deeper than you think. I'm not done yet, by the way. I'm just getting started. Just so y'all know, I love you. I love you, but I'm telling you to be able to heal what we need healing that COVID may have started, but it ran deeper. It just opened the blinds on way bigger issues that are right here, not out there. That's why church is just as hostile as out there right now. And as the scripture says, my brothers and sisters, that should not be. You, um, you won't even look at people who have had affairs. You, you, you see somebody that have an, has an affair and you are disgusted with them. You can't stand them. You, we start talking about oh, they just, they, they, how bad they are, how terrible they are. But here's the thing. You don't even confide or communicate to your own spouse. Your bae don't even know you. Y'all been married 27,000 years and they don't even know you. So you've never confided in somebody else but you also don't confide in the person that you committed your life to and they, they barely know you. And you can't even look at somebody for having an affair because it just hits you so deep because it hits too close to home. And it's something deep that you may not be able to think and articulate, but we are projecting. Tell somebody, double standards are destructive. Live your own lectures, take your own criticism, have some conversations and tell your wife or husband what you want out of life, what is wounding you. There's a, most people don't even have conversations and then one day they die or after a divorce, it's too freaking late because you've held back so long the bridges burn. And we want to blame people that leave their families for other people and honestly what happens is the you end up burning down your house and you never even leave it. You end up running from it when it's burned to the ground. I'm telling you, this is it's a hard thing, y'all. Anytime that you feel the animosity that we feel about any issue and you feel that much passion, it is some way related projection, whether it's bias or whether it's guilt, it is projection. And Jesus said, look, matter of fact, say this when we're going to do this the rest of the message. Say, lock, point, put your eye right here online. You better do it from the bed. Say, lock, 
You slip in, you can at least do this. Say, do it, say lock. Lock. How in the world are you going to help people heal when you got your own log and you're not just blinded to your own issues? You don't know how to heal them. You're just projecting because you're angry, whether it's because of guilt or whether it's because of woundedness or just insecurity or shame. And we end up projecting. You know what that does? It just deepens the wounds. Just deepens the wounds. And Jesus said, hey, hold up. Hold up. Hold up. You preach and post about the grace of God. Preach and post. But look at the spirit of your social media posts. I've even seen these self-righteous posts that are still very, very, you can even do, have, that, are, that are honestly right in principle, but they're still prideful. Hey, what's the, what's, the, what's the content of the conversations at your dinner table? You can talk about the grace of God all day. But what do you project at the dinner table and on your social media page? What does your heart really feel about the people that you're jealous of that you wish you had what they had or you don't like them or you don't gravitate towards them or you feel like uh, they, they did whatever they did to you and you're bitter? If you're rooting in any way for them to lose, if the people that you set boundaries with are the people that are no longer in your life, you in your heart want them to see how wrong they were and you want them to lose if that's what it, that right there is projection. Tell somebody, take your own criticism. Man, that is not the heart of Jesus. It is not even about the issues, it's about the heart. Why does it anger us? Man, I have seen men and women get so easily provoked and act out of anger and out of complete character the last 18 months more than I ever have in my life. And I know I've only lived almost 36 years, but my God, at some point, people got to chill out. Chill out, man. I used to only see like, you used to only in your friend group have the person that's just very insecure and overly sensitive flip out and they flipped out about once a week. But my gosh, everybody is that person right now. I'm that person. I've had to say, man, this starts with me. My gosh. And it is projection. We project onto others the things that we need to invest in and really put effort in in our own lives. Why does it anger you? I'm going to ask heart questions. I'm going to ask some heart questions for a while. Can I do that? I want, I want you to ask your own heart. You ready? Ask this. Here we go. Why does it anger you? Why does it anger us to have conversations about controversial issues? Let's just throw one out there. About, about if your life if it makes your life, if the color of your skin makes your life easier or harder to be successful. It's a conversation that on both sides, people are literally violent over. I'm gonna take it away from racism and privilege because I'm not a politician. I'm gonna take it away from this. Let's, let's, let's apply this principle somewhere else. I started thinking about my own life. So I've, I've expressed to you all the addiction, that I, the, the childhood that was very challenging that I had. And, and I've told you a lot about my dad and the heartbreak of it. Um, so I, you've seen all that, the addiction. I've had a front row seat, all those things. But here's the thing. My dad was present for the most part, at least from my life. My brother could tell you a different story. But, um, but my, uh, my dad was present. There was actually times I wish he hadn't have been because I was ready for his tail to leave. It does not bother me and it does not offend me to say that there are people out there, many people that had it easier than me because, they had, they, because at least I had a father and a male at home and they had nothing. No example. A lot of people say, well, I learned from the wrong example. What do you do with no example? Changes the scenery there when you actually read, we actually read a situation away from the controversial issue. You skinny people, I don't like you. <laughs> you have no idea what it's like. You eat twice as much as me and you were skinny. You have no idea what it's like, how I have to count my calories every day. No idea. Yeah, you got it harder than me. You can crave a cheesecake and eat it. I crave one and my ounces start going up and I ain't even done it. My slobber just adds up and puts on weight. Don't you dare. We, we like, we, oh, when it comes to comparisons, oh, we can really get real. 
But I got a, my, my, my little cousin, Kaysen, he's, uh, he's in youth right now. He was back there. Little cousin Kaysen, man eats like seven times more than me and Garrett. If me and Garrett ate that much, we wouldn't be humans. We would be blimps. I'm mean, like, is that like your seventh Fudge Pop, bro? I wish I could have seven Fudge, fudge Pops. Fudge Pops, too. But man, you start going to the color of your skin and the differences in situations, man, we will go, we will go ghetto, we will go country boy, we will whip out the bats, the guns, we will start assaulting people on Facebook. Do you know why? Double standards are really deep sometimes and we don't like to look at them. When it goes to the issues we're sensitive about, the things that you put effort in, it's hard. Sometimes we got to practice what we project. It's hard. Here's another hard question. Why do you get so angry and annoyed when the teacher calls to tell you the things that your kids need to work on and improve on? Treat the adult like it's the child and the child like they're the adult. I'll tell you why. Two reasons. It's either one of two things, guilt or bias. Guilt, because I've seen so many parents that are guilty over the things that they allowed their kids to go through or the things that they hurt their kids, they were, the, they were the perpetrator and they are guilty. And guilt, I've seen guilt will split up any family and will really quickly split up blended families. I can't tell you how many counseling appointments, I've had marriage counseling that Angie and I've had over the years where the guilt one parent has over their biological child has driven a wedge between the marriage because they are so guilty that they will not challenge or hold their children accountable. They let them run all over them because of guilt. And I've seen good marriages, not just ones that, not just ones that they should have never gotten married. I mean, marriages that they were very compatible come to an end and the bridge be burned because of guilt. Bias. We think bias. I'm telling you, we, we imagine my kid would never do that. Other kids would. Every single kid on this planet has the potential and honestly is a turd sometimes, period. The point of raising children is so that they grow up and become less of turds and they only do it on occasions like us. Unless you're one of those that you are a turd all the time and then you need to what? Practice what you project. Because let me tell you how your kid will end up becoming the same type of insecure and miserable and shame-filled as you. If you cuss out the people that are trying to hold them accountable. If you tell the coaches how much they should play and, and they're, they shouldn't bench your kid. Listen, you may know your kid's strengths better than they do because they only coach them for two months. But I'm going to tell you, they know your kid's weaknesses better than you do because you are blinded to those. And bias will... Li- If you want your kid to grow up, raise and children, listen, don't let their only reference be a parent that constantly came to their rescue and enabled them. Let them fight some battles. Let them be accountable. Apologize to the teacher because it's hard to sit down and say, man, there's some things I need to work on my child a little better than I have in this season. But you know the only way to heal, take your own criticism, live your own lectures, know that double standards are destructive and tell somebody practice what you project. Why? Why do we get so angry about those things? It's because it's deep. It's inside of us. It's an insecurity. It's a, I don't feel like I'm enough. And instead of deal with it, admit that there's an issue in all of us, we begin to project it onto other people. And we attack them and accusations are always confessions and we end up projecting. And, some of the, and I'm going to get into some more. I still ain't got started yet, really. Y'all, y'all know that, right? Tell somebody practice what you project. Practice what you project. Do it with me. Say, lock, lock, lock. Why do you, why do you feel the need to address every single issue on social media? I mean, like if your spouse uh, farts too loud, you're like, hey, your wife got a colon problem. Mine does. I was a, that, was, that was hypothetical, baby. I'm just playing. <laughs> we do. We speak to everything. Every issue we feel like, and then when somebody challenges, this is my timeline. I can do what I want to. This is a public forum, bro. 
Like what you're doing is you're projecting and you make your life harder because you get in a bickering conversation with somebody else that's as passionate and and is projecting as much as you. And before you know it, you've wasted three hours of your life and you're just madder than you were before you posted it. It is insanity because Jesus says, log, log. Why do you feel the need to constantly tell everybody who will listen how ridiculously evil and awful your ex is? Doesn't matter how bad they did you. It really doesn't. I feel for you, but Jesus is still on the throne and he loves you with all his heart and he's still got a promise for you, but you're never going to get it projecting like that. Why? And who are you trying to convince anyway? Oh man, they were, look, man, look, they were awful. They beat you. They took your money, took your child. Yeah, those things may be true, but the fact that 10 years later, you're still trying to tell everybody how they set you back, to how they did, how they wounded you, how they did you wrong. Listen to me. Why? William Shakespeare said it best. He said, I believe thou protest too much, project too much. We talk about in the world right now, we got to have a conversation. We got to have a, we got to come to the table and have dialogue. That's the answer. Conversations, dialogue. And it is. Conversations are the answer in your marriage, your friendships, your relationships, your job, our world, the church. Conversations do make changes. That's why we invest so much in our counseling ministry. Conversations change. But here's the thing. Conversation doesn't work until you have the right motives for coming to a table. Because having dialogue is not coming to a table with your intention saying, I need to tell them, I need to show them just how right I am. That's why D.C. is a big playground right now. Elementary school all over again just looks a little different and and, and people have money thrown around so they hurt people a lot more. Conversations aren't going to change anything if your motive and heart are for coming to the table to show them and and you're praying, I just want to open their eyes to the truth in Jesus' name. I can tell you, when I preach on this stage, I tell people all the time, the difference in me and most pastors is I know I'm wrong about some stuff. But I don't want to be wrong about grace, mercy, and his love. I'll get to heaven. Jesus will say, I can't believe you read that that way, man. You were dead, dead gum wrong. And I'm going to say, hey, I tried. Thank God you're Jesus and I'm not. We'd all be messed up. But we come to the table and our heart and motives is saying, hey, I need to, we need to pray. As a pastor, I'm not trying to recreate bins. I'm wrong about some stuff. But I know I love Jesus and I want to be more right about some things every single day. Your motives for having a conversation are what changes things, not the conversation. Until people come to the table and their heart is understanding. Come to the table with empathy towards people that you don't understand their perspective. Hey, you've got so much water under the bridge with your spouse. You don't like them. You don't want to look at them. But you come to the table with a heart of understanding. That is when you start removing the log and you start handling things the way Jesus did. And you have the respect and you have the self-respect to say, let's have a conversation. People are like, conversation? No, conversation won't change nothing if you think you're right so much that you don't need some understanding in your own life. Because a lot of us, we are prisoners to our perspective and our pride and that's why we're projecting. Hmm. All my guests, I want you to know I don't do this as much, but I'm doing it today. I promise you, I don't do this a lot all the time. It's a hard thing for me. I've seen car-toting Republicans that are not representing the purest forms of, of conservatism. Their voice and their spirit is not conservative. You were loud and you were not living it. And I have seen Democrats who have great ideas for social justice, but you were projecting it, not practicing it, and that is self-righteous pride. I have learned in this season as much as I ever have that I don't even care what side of the argument I'm on. It's the heart of the matter. Because if you're not open to being understanding and open to know, to admitting that you were wrong and, or at least you misjudged or misinterpreted somebody, I've had to learn to apologize. Yes, I judged you. Yes, I was not empathetic towards you. I'm sorry. Let's move forward. Empathy. Empathy. Empathy is what's missing. Be careful about hating that girl you're... Your daughter, or hating that guy your daughter's dating. Be careful. 
Because the reason you hate him so bad, if you really want to admit it, is because you see somebody that you used to know. Used to be. And maybe more than you care to admit still are. Be careful about projecting because projecting hurts you and others. You're that little girl, that grown girl now is only example. Maybe you need to heal and happens when you look in the mirror and see how you've been treating her mama and start making steps to fixing it instead of projecting on a teenager that's just as dumb as you were at 16. Just as egocentric as you were at 16. And I'm going to tell you, hey, your mamas, don't flip out and say, why are you doing this? Because they watched you not stand your ground with their daddy. And so they're probably going to let them treat, they're probably going to let him treat her bad for a lot longer than they should because you did it. And what happens is we repeat. We repeat our reference and you are your kid's reference. I'm not saying this to beat you down. I'm saying this to healing happens when you begin to look in the mirror. When you begin to say and realize that I have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I may have a great reputation in the community. I may have some things that I haven't done wrong in the same way that other people are so that I'm celebrated for a lot of the stuff, but I got my own junk. You got your own junk. And as Paul said, we work out our salvation, our salvation with fear and trembling. Our own. Our own. Hmm. It's hard. I want you to know, parents, listen to me right now. Everything that you don't address in your home, you are endorsing in your kid's heart. I have lived long enough that I have seen parents. Why do they think they can do that? It's because when you, the areas in your life that you walk on eggshells and won't have hard conversations in your, your children's spirit, you are endorsing it. And so they will grow up and take what you took. They will grow up and, sp- and spend the money that, in ways that you don't think they should spend it. They will grow up and treat their kids where the grandparents are like, oh my God, why is he or she treating my grandchild like that? They were watching you. And the only way to heal is not to beat yourself up with shame. The only way to heal is right now, whether you're 87,000 years old or eight. Change your life now. Lock. You got to go deep and wide where it hurts. You got to go deep and wide where it hurts. And it hurts us all in some places because we've all lived long enough to make some mistakes. We just, we just teenage girls for getting pregnant. Oh, I can't believe I thought she was a good girl. Teenage boys, I can't believe he got her pregnant. What was he thinking? Listen to me. You were creeping at that age too. You were creeping at that age too. You just got lucky and your soldiers didn't win. And you got lucky because you never had to have a conversation with your parents and tell them that you were pregnant. And for the next nine months or honestly years, you were going to be the girl that got pregnant as a teenager. You never had to deal with that. And here's the thing with all these issues. Hear me. It's okay that you never had to deal with it. Just stop acting like you did and you understand it. And like you got everything and everybody summed up. We don't. Empathy. Empathy. You don't have to like the way somebody sees it, the way they dress. You don't have to like the generation above you or beneath you. Empathy. Empathy. Won't you start doing well, start with empathy? It's okay that you don't understand what it's like to be black. It's okay that you don't understand what it's like to be a cop in this climate. Quit acting like you do and quit defending everything and everybody based on your bias or your guilt because you don't understand what it's like. It's okay that you don't understand what it's like to be a single mama, but quit criticizing that single mama like you do. It's okay that you don't understand what it's like to be a female in this, in this culture that has the expectations of perfection, but a lower ceiling of promotion. It's okay that you don't know what it's like to feel the pressures that we put on our males and our men. It's okay. But don't act like you do and don't treat people like you do and don't project on people because you don't feel enough. It's okay. But quit acting 
like you know it because we don't be empathetic. That was what Jesus was saying because when the log is removed from your own eyes, your heart becomes like his. Your opinions may change because your heart for people changes. That's why it said Jesus didn't break the bru- break the uh, he didn't bru- he didn't crush the uh, weakest reed or put out the flickering candle because his heart for people changed. It's why that he looked at people that were different than him and it said that Jesus was struck with compassion because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Those same people put him on the cross. That was his heart. That was who he is. Empathetic. Do you remember when the woman is caught in adultery? Like literally they had their stones because in that time you were going to kill. You killed a woman that did that. That was the world they lived. And when Jesus said these words, they were ready to project that stone on that woman. They were ready to hurt her and kill her. And he said this, he who is without sin cast the first stone. Do you know what he did? He challenged them to look in the mirror. And when they looked in the mirror, do you know what they did? Drop what they were about to project. Lock. You want to heal? You want the world to heal? The world needs less of your opinions. They need less of your projection. They need more of your, of, of, they need more healing. They need more of your love. They need you to focus on yourself because healing starts right here. Deep and wide starts right here. I have no, listen to me. I am a heterosexual white male. I have no idea the pain and the day-to-day things that, that my gay brothers and sisters have to deal with. I have no idea and I don't pretend to and I don't preach like I do but I'm going to tell you we care, Catalyst cares, I care. And that's why we say unapologetically there's room for you here. There's room for anybody here who wants to grow. Because when you come in here and you start looking in the mirror and you really want to take God seriously it doesn't matter what you're dealing with or not dealing with you'll become whatever Jesus wants you to be when you trust his reference. I have no idea what some of you go through and you have no idea some of the things I go through. The only thing that I have to deal with on my appearance is I look a lot lamer than I am. Chubby, glasses, southern drawl. I have to work a little bit harder to show you that I'm not really all that lame. You get me? At least I'm not as lame as I look. I'm still pretty lame. You get me in a restaurant and my tics are bad and I groan really loud and I grunt really loud. Y'all don't get to see that. But when that, I'll see people looking at me. Sometimes the whole restaurant will look at me. I feel bad for who I'm ever with, especially if it's not my family because it's like they didn't sign up for this lunch. And they look at me and, 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 and usually here are the faces. It's either confusion, awkwardness, or just annoyed because like you're messing up my lunch. You know what I've never gotten? I've never gotten the look of hostility, skepticism, or disgust because of my race, because of my gender, because of my sexual orientation or because of my spouse's race, gender, or sexual orientation. I don't know what that's like. I don't know what that's like. But I know that I want Jesus to live through me. And being the people that claim to love Jesus and the people making those looks at other people, Jesus said, you need to work on the log in your own eye. Because you're blinded, not just to them, you're blinded to your own stuff that you need to deal with and work on, y'all. And if we want to go deep and wide, we got to begin to practice what we project. We've got to be, before before you can heal others, you got to heal yourself or you're just going to continue to hurt other people and hurt yourself. You're going to continue to spiral in the hole and and you're praying to God to get out of the hole, but you're projecting on other people and you're going deeper in the hole. At some point, you've got to say, it's me, Jesus, that stands in the need of prayer. It is me. I need to repent. It, It doesn't matter to the city. I'm not responsible for them, them, or them. I'm responsible for Ben Bonner. You start posting less on social media about the issues that everybody else is dealing with. What we like to do is we like to shift focus on other people's dysfunctions and defects so that we don't have to deal with our own. But here's the thing. We have enough defects that we do understand. We don't have time to be dealing with everybody else's that we don't. We don't have time to be accusing other people. Listen to me. I 
God saved a wretched like me. The grace of God, the mercy of God is for me. And notice that Jesus said we love to quote that, hey, don't, 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 don't mess with your brother's spec. No, no, he said first get the log out of your own because once you heal and your heart changes, then you'll be able to help heal others. But what we got is a bunch of hurting people running around bleeding on everybody right now. Will you bow your heads with me? In your heart, what is it? I know you're bitter about something. I know you got some bias. You got some guilt. We all got it. What are the toxic traits in your heart? I didn't say the toxic traits of anybody else. I didn't say the things that you think are toxic in the world. What are your own toxic traits? What are they? What are the things that you need to repent? The word repent means go a different direction. What are the things right now? Fill in the blanks. What are the things that bother you? What are the things you were wounded You were shame driven. You were insecure. What are the things that make you worry? What are the things that make you feel like you're less? Think about those things because you need healing from those. You need to say, Jesus, I'm sorry. I repent. Right now in your heart, just say, Jesus, I invite you. I don't want to. What are the things that you can't handle and you can't handle in other people? Because honestly, it hits too close to home because we all got them. And there's things that you may never admit to anybody that you got, but you got them. And the things that you're so angry about and so easily project, they, they're, they're that, you're that passionate about them for a reason. What are they? Now look up at me. Look up at me. I don't care if you can explain your way around me or exhaust me in a debate. I don't care if you, you, you know politics or theology better than me. I don't care. Don't care. Went to seminary, that's great. I don't care because this is what I care about. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13, three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. I don't care how much you know. I don't care how much you think you know. I don't care what you think the problem in the world is. If you're not loving, if you've lost your tenderness, if you in some way you're projecting constantly, you're overly sensitive, there's your issue. Start addressing it. Log. Because we can be a part of the healing in the world when we heal first. And there's a point in our lives that it's time. Now's the time. I, I need you, Lord. I fall short of the glory of God. I want your love to change me. And that's your focus. You hear me? You hear me? Can you receive that? Can you hear my heart? I love y'all. I love this. God's moving in this place. And I'm telling you, the best is yet to come because we choose it, because we trust God.